You won't hear the background, but I'll just introduce you. So here we go. Streaming live every weekday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. on Facebook Live and MichaelDukesShow.com. That's right. Your chances have off on issues of a two-way nature right here on the Michael Duke Show. We appreciate you coming in and joining us. Today, we got a special guest that's going to be with us here for a little bit, and that is Larry Pratt, who is Executive Director Emeritus of the uh, organization known as GOA, Gun Owners of America. Larry Pratt joins us this morning to discuss, well, guns and politics, and specifically, Guns in our state politics uh, and our state senator, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Larry Larry Pratt joins us right now. Good morning, Larry. How are you? I am well. Good to be with you. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Uh, thanks for coming on, uh, getting so close to the holidays. I appreciate it. So, Well, it's nice to be on a show where you can say Merry Christmas. That's right. That's right. Well, Larry, <laughs> t- tell, me, tell me what's going on here. What... Uh, what is the deal with Lisa Murkowski? You sent out an alert the other day that's saying she was kind of getting in bed with Chuck Schumer on some stuff in regards to gun rights. Uh, I want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Well, there are two pieces of legislation dealing with guns at the moment that seem to have some wind at their back. One is the national reciprocity measure, which would let me, with my Virginia concealed carry permit, go to a state, oh, like a city, even like Chicago, where they would rather throw up than uh, allow somebody to legally carry a gun. If this law were to become the law of the land, they would have to recognize it the way they have to recognize other states' driver's licenses. Right. Uh, the other piece of legislation that some uh, of the politicians have tried to couple with the carry measure is a background check expansion. Uh, They're not changing anything in the law itself, but they're funneling money to the state so that uh, names that haven't been stuck into this unconstitutional system might end up getting stuck into the system so that more and more people would be denied legal access to purchase of a gun. Uh, To understand what's behind or why this background check is Uh, not favored by gun owners of America, Uh, imagine if to do the very show we're doing right now, you and I had to submit our names to a government database, probably run by the FBI or uh, let's be imaginative, the Federal Communications Commission, and they had to approve. And if there were five other Larry Pratt's, one of whom was on the for Balkan list, then uh, we couldn't go ahead. We'd have to wait until and if they ever got the confusion straightened out. That happens all the time with gun owners. Some 95% of the denials are false positives. Uh, People that might have had the misfortune of uh, being born with the name of John Smith. And one of those out of a thousand in the country, or however many, uh, could easily be a bad guy and on the prohibited list. So that's what's wrong with the system. And instead, they allow gun-free zones to continue where 98% of mass shootings occur. Why why not go for the problem? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, We would rather do something else. Right. Well, and that's that's, uh, definitely an issue. You and I talked about that last time we had you on. Uh, But now you're talking about Senator Lisa Murkowski. Um, now supporting this same idea, the Nix fix, as we're talking about. Right. Well, we've um, uh, labeled John Cornyn the principal sponsor of the measure, who oftentimes is pro-Second Amendment. Uh, we've labeled him as Darth Cornyn uh, after the uh, current um, <laughs> movie of Star Wars, where, of course, Darth Vader is the epitome of evil. And uh, Darth Corner ha- Cornyn seems to have gone over to the dark side because he's not paying a never mind to the concealed carry legis- – to the background check that would uh, be just as obnoxious for gun owners as it would be a, a background check to uh, 
do a radio TV talk show or publish an editorial in the newspaper. Right, right. Well, you and I have talked in the past about how, you know, the most laws in this country, most of the gun laws specifically, are unconstitutional, blatantly unconstitutional. And there's been lots of interpretation and discussion and everything else. But pretty much, if you go back and you read the founders' papers and and their editorials and their commentaries and the letters to each other, you understand that they intended no regulation against firearms in the hands of the citizenry. In fact, they felt it was crucial to the liberty and continued existence of the republic. Uh, and that has slowly been chipped away over the course of the last 230 years. Let me just uh, uh, nail that point you just made in a little farther. Um, not only did they not want restrictive reg- regulation of any kind, they did believe in gun control of a sort. Uh, the Militia Act of 1792 passed uh, in within months of the final approval of the Bill of Rights, said that if you were white male between the ages of, I think it was 17 and 44, you had to have a long gun period. And there were many of the colonies and later states where you couldn't legally travel without a pistol. Right. And if they caught you, they'd find you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty that's pretty serious as opposed to what's going on today. I think only Kennesaw, Georgia, still has that law in existence where you have to have a gun in every household uh, around. The, Few others, the but you're right; yeah. it's very limited. Yeah, but, and uh, it does have the spirit of what the founders had in mind. Right. Well, again, they wanted people to be responsible for themselves and be able to defend themselves from all, you know, all comers, be it uh, footpads and criminals, to uh, some kind of uh, tyrannical uh, exercise in government. Which they were very afraid And we have of. to keep in mind, by the way, that their idea of a police force was an elected sheriff. And if he needed help for law enforcement, or for that matter, if any citizen needed help for, with law enforcement, they would issue what is called a hue and cry. Uh, you or I might run down to the center of the village and scream, uh, see, see, if I need help, I need help. And they'd have to come. They'd right. better come or they're in trouble. Right, right. Well, so here we sit with this new fix Nix deal, which, again, I think you and I both agree is is blatantly unconstitutional. This is the same group of people, by the way, who wanted to say no fly, no buy. And we know how many people have hit the no fly list that weren't supposed to be on there. And this is the same kind of incrementalism that we've seen over the course of years on all of these kind of infringements on our rights, not just in firearms, but in many other ways. Uh, it's this it's this one bite at a time kind of situation. Absolutely. And and this idea that somehow you uh, uh, you're not going to be able to have a gun without the government's permission, that ought to really chap us. Uh, it, it, the the whole notion was to keep the Brits from barging into our house with only a general search warrant. A writ of assistance, they called it, not specific to p- time or place or person. So, okay, I'm looking for your guns. Where are they? Right, right. And you couldn't do a lick of uh, resistance or you were in real trouble at that point. And, and so that was, in fact, that was one of the things more than the taxes, uh, which really irritated the founding fathers uh, because it was the in the pursuit of those uh, taxes that we hadn't approved of, that quote unquote justified home invasions by thugs dressed up as soldiers by the British. Right. Well, and and again, this was the whole intent of the framers and the founders was that people be able to protect themselves. And I mean specifically against criminals, sure, but they were more they were more terrified because they had just lived it, they had just seen it, and they were students of history, more terrified yep. of a government that could run amok against citizenry's, you know, rights and inalienable rights. The government was so decentralized that it was law enforcement was the way I just described it. They, they didn't have, there was nowhere in our country where there was a police force, certainly not in any major city until Boston in 1830. Uh, that's how long it took the founders to even come around to the idea of maybe you know, five or 10 professional guys. But still the notion was that if they needed help, they would issue a hue and cry. They'd get a posse together. Uh, Folks like you and me would better have our gun at the ready because we might have to go at a moment's notice and help uh, those few professional 
uh, or full-time, not necessarily professional, lawmen. Uh, it was such a different concept, and you've used the word. That at the core of all this was self-reliance. Right. Our American government was based on self-government, and if we lose that concept, then I don't see how America, as it was envisioned, can stand. Larry, this has been the problem, though, that, again, this incrementalism. And we've come to the point now today where there's a vast majority of Americans who have totally bought into the program of, uh, you know, only the government should have guns, only the police should have guns, only the military should have guns, that there's too many guns out there, that citizenry can't be trusted with firearms. And if only we passed more laws, we, of course, would all be safer and kumbaya and hold hands and have a Coke and a smile. Well, let's, let's ask for a timeout when we hear people talk that way. Uh, what then is their position uh, regarding the Antifa? Uh, they hate the cops. They kill cops. Uh, do we support that? So we support violence against cops even while we think only cops should have guns? Oops. Yeah. Seems to me that's not going to work real well. Right. That's the dichotomy. It's the same group of people who scream only the police and military should have guns. And then they march the next day against the same police for, for, you know, for brutality against the community. And so it's this dichotomy of can you not get your philosophy straight? Um, how, how, how well, do, it reminds me of uh, one of my friends here in Washington, D.C. has a great uh, morning drive talk show, Chris Plant. And one of his favorite sayings, and it applies at least once a day is, well, without double standards, the liberals would have no standards at all. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the truth sometimes? I think it's politicians. Bingo. I think it's politicians in general, you know, not just the liberals, but politicians in general. Um, all right. I'm afraid so. So how do we fix this? I mean, you know, we're, we're talking now specifically, by the way, we're talking with Larry Pratt, who's the executive director of Gun Owners of America. You can find them at gunowners.org. But, I mean, how do we fix this? We got Lisa Murkowski. You know, partnering up with Chuck Schumer on this fix Nix thing, we've got the overarching thing that we just talked about. This kind of this kind of philosophy that that the that the masses have picked up, being oh, we can't all have guns or we shouldn't all have guns. How do we fight back against this? I mean, first, I guess the Murkowski thing. How do we fight back against that? Well, I don't know whether we'll get the senator herself to see what she's involved in, but hopefully, a lot of people watching that may not have their own. Uh, identity engaged and involved in this might come to the conclusion that, uh, gee, um, how, how are we going to be able to reconcile uh, hating the very guys that could that should have a monopoly of force? Right. <laughs> and, and when they figure that out, maybe they can they can uh, uh, can show the rest of us where we haven't been able to understand. Right. But they've really got a problem, and that is the nub of their problem. They, their whole way of looking at uh, law enforcement is based on a radical contradiction. And, what, and point out, give me the, give me some details of the contradiction from your perspective. Well, we've we've heard people talking about how uh, the the cops are uh, pigs and the cops are murderers, and uh, uh, they've got to give way and and allow uh, Black Lives Matter to trash all of Charlottesville, for example, or or whatever. Right. And yet when when they want somebody to stop breaking into their house, they don't call 911? Really? They, I didn't think they believed in having their own guns. Seems to me like 911 is the only option they've got. Right. And yet they've already said, "Oh, they're terrible people. Those are murderers." Right. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, that's the dichotomy. <laughs> like I said, that's the dichotomy we find ourselves in. Police are the only ones that should have guns, but the police are horrible, vicious people that want to kill us all. And so, again, that dichotomy is just, it's the ultimate of, uh, of uh, irony. It's that uh, jumbo shrimp. It's that oxymoronic kind of attitude that's going on. I right like there. that, yes. You know, yes. So, and it's a... <laughs> so, so what are we going to do? Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll work on Lisa Murkowski from our end to talk to her about that. I don't think we need the fix, Nick's uh, uh, poor part of this. At I all. Just want, yeah, I just want to see will carry reciprocity. Let, let's, let's keep one thing in mind. If she wants to go into the weeds and argue, in a recent year where they did about 20 million background checks, there were 44 prosecutions that resulted. Is that really a smart use of time and people's money? Right. Really? Right. That, that is such a non-starter. Why not make it 
so that it's illegal to go about as it was in Virginia, as it was in many parts of New England for quite some time. It was illegal to go about without a gun uh, because we knew that you weren't going to be strong enough to have a cop in your holster. You had to have a much lighter device right. called a gun, right. a pistol. Cop whatever. was way too heavy to carry <laughs> around, right? Yeah, I couldn't carry a constable yeah. with me wherever I went, so I had to carry a firearm. Well, I mean, it makes yeah. it makes about as much sense at this point, Larry. And and I I look at people who who start screaming about this kind of stuff, and I just you know I shake my head because obviously, you know, what we have is we have a whole bunch of hype. We've got hype from the media, we've got hype from the entertainment industry, we've got hype from all these different sources talking about it. They don't look at the actual facts. I mean, the facts are that there are more guns in America today than ever before. We've sold more guns in the last 10 years in America than in probably the previous 40 years combined. And yet the violent crime rate in this country has continued to plummet. The, the homicide rate with firearms has continued to plummet. And, and the people just, they can't see the forest through the trees that the news media and the entertainment complex has created. You know, uh, it, it seems like this discussion that we're having is making uh, some sense to people, at, uh, in, not only in our own country, but uh, in the in the Czech Republic right now, the socialist president Zeman is pushing for language in their Czech constitution that would resemble very much our Second Amendment. Right. But he also wants to restrict the uh, uh, unrestricted migration into the country of Muslims who are not vetted. Uh, so that there's no way to know who's coming in to cut your throat and who's coming in to get a job. Right. And that uh, uh, is uh, an encouraging sign of progress. Now, it's it's also something that we're seeing a bit in Austria, Hungary, uh, but not in, in Germany, France, and, and uh, somewhat in, in England. But those two major continental European powers they're still stuck on stupid. Right. They don't seem to have any clue what made it so easy for Hitler to grab all the guns. Well, and you can see it right now that the, the, the European Union's got their panties all up in a wad because these countries are like, no, we think we'd like to uh, have unrestricted access to firearms now to be able to protect ourselves. Thank you. Yeah. And the EU is in just fact, like, a, oh. a friend of mine, an American married to a Slovak, lives uh, in Slovakia near the Ukrainian border. And he said the the gun laws in 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 that country are uh, well to jump the cut to the chase probably about like Virginia's kind of midway between uh, stuck on stupid uh, uh, Chicago and uh, uh, say a place like uh, Alaska that uh, has no restrictions for practical matter or almost none. Right. Uh, and that's the uh, and that's where you find now some of the Central European countries that were. Uh, uh, afflicted in the last century by socialists of all kinds, German socialists, uh, Russian socialists. Uh, they, they really had a miserable time. And some of them seem to have figured out that, you know, life would have been a lot less terrifying if we could have put a couple of rounds in the heads of the German and or the Soviet noggins. Right, exactly. Ahead of time, early on, we could have saved a lot of a lot of grief and issues if we'd been able to do that. So Switzerland never got invaded by these Cretans because the the Cretans knew that if you go in with an army to Switzerland, and the best the German general staff could tell Hitler was, "Yeah, we think we can take them. Only cost half the army." Right. It only cost. Oh, only half. Yeah. Only That's fifty percent yeah. casualties. <laughs> right. Yeah, only fifty percent. Um, so we, you know, we're seeing, you know, some light in the world. Some places are starting to come to their senses and understand the the power that is an armed citizenry. Um, we can reach out to Senator Murkowski to try and get it or stop. But what's your recommendation here as we get ready to wind things up with you? I know you got other things to do today. But what's your recommendation well, tell her, to other people? Yeah, tell her that while she's uh, uh, playing, no, they don't say foot playing footsie. When she's when she's trying to make an agreement with uh, Chuck Schumer, this guy is hardcore left. Thinks that the government knows better than anybody on everything, and there's no making deals with Chuck Schumer. This guy is just not inclined that way, and she's not going to win any points from uh, the people that normally would vote for her in Alaska. 
the best thing she can do is to tell Mr. Schumer, hey, uh, I got other things to do. Sorry, can't work with you anymore. Right. Well, and then how do we tell the rest of the citizenry how to deal with this on a day-to-day basis outside of this one bill? How do we educate and enlighten the public on the, the privilege and the power and the reason why America needs to continue to be the most well-armed society in the world? Well, in one way, it's because we're just ask the question, where would you feel safest living, Chicago or Fairbanks? Uh, you know, <laughs> Chicago or Anchorage, for that matter. Right. Um, it, it's very simple, really. The, the crime rates in the 15 or so states that have no restriction whatsoever on carrying a concealed firearm, those are the states that have the most enviable gun uh, violence problems. They almost have none. And so that's really something that uh, would be of immediate benefit to many, many people in any state that adopts uh, that kind of non-restrictive legislation. And I think that uh, as a more general matter, the whole idea of the government that works for us by constitution, where do they get off telling us how we can have a gun and whether we can have a gun, how many guns we can have? I don't think that's uh, part of the uh, rules that were laid down for the government to follow. The Constitution doesn't bind you and me. It, it binds the folks that we employ in the government. Right, right, absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, and that needs to be reminded. They need to be reminded of that time and time and time again, and that's the reason why the founders were so – um, we're so uh, on top of this. That's why they were so uh, urgent about making sure that the populace was armed. And quite honestly, it's probably, uh, Larry, the only reason why we still are as free as we are today because of that implicit threat uh, against the government of making stupid or unconstitutional laws is that the citizenry is armed and they best not step over that threshold and wake the sleeping giant, so to speak. Uh, you, you can see an historical drama Uh, It illustrates exactly what you're talking about. If you go to YouTube, you can just type in Battle of Athens. It comes from a movie by another name, but that'll call up the last 15 minutes or so of this uh, Hollywood major production uh, produced right after the Second World War. And, uh, And in actual fact, the little town of Athens, Tennessee, was ruled by some very corrupt folks. They stole the ballot boxes the night of the election. Right. In fact, uh, it reminded me of my wife's home country of Panama, because the one time she voted there before becoming an American citizen, that's what happened to the vote she cast in a ballot box that soldiers walked off with. And of course, they took care to make sure the count turned out, quote, right. right. And so the Battle of Athens shows you that had the people of that town not been armed and not been able to respond, as they did about an hour after the theft. There was a brief shootout, which is historical. The cops realized that there's a whole lot more of them than of us. And so they went out with a white flag without their guns, left the ballot box behind, and voila! Uh, the townspeople uh, were able to determine that the reform slate had won the voting. Right. Uh, without the Second Amendment, uh, that would never have happened. So that was the, the Second Amendment with legs. Absolutely. Larry Pratt, President, uh, Executive Director Emeritus, actually, of Gun Owners of America. You can find him at gunowners.org. Larry, any final thoughts here as we let you go uh, spend more time with your family? For the yeah, uh, one quick thing. Let me just urge people to go to gunowners.org. Please take advantage of the free offer. Get signed up for our email alerts. Not only does it keep you informed about what's happening in Washington with legislation, but it makes it really easy for you to put the heat on members of Congress so that they might do the right thing. Uh, One of their own years ago, the Senate Majority Leader Everett Dirksen was fond of saying with his gravelly cigarette stained voice, uh, when I feel the heat, I uh, see the light. (laughs) That's right. That's right. He sees the light and nobody brings the heat like gun owners of America. That's exactly right. Good. Uh, all right. I like that. Well, Larry Pratt, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holy Days to you, my friend. I appreciate you taking the time out with your family to come on here and uh, and join us. Uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you here again in the near future, and uh, may you have a well, very, I do too. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you, Michael. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it. The Michael Duke Show continues right here on your home for Common Sense Radio. 
It's, it's the Michael Dukes Show. Here's you in about five minutes. Oh, no. I haven't started shopping yet. Oh, no. Happy holidays. Take it easy. Streaming live every weekday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. on Facebook Live and MichaelDukesShow.com. All right. Getting ready to uh, pull things around here. Definitely a shortened edition of Firearms Friday today. I wanted to make sure we get a chance to talk with Larry Pratt specifically about what's going on in uh, uh, specifically what was going on in Congress uh, with uh, Senator Murkowski and what she had to say. Um, you know, this is a pretty important day of the week for me to be able to talk about these issues and and show exactly what. Um, and show exactly what you know we've been we've been talking about uh, with all these issues and and how firearms relates to uh, to the protection and to the the freedom that we have uh, here in the United States. Um, it's important, but we're coming up on the holidays, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for listening to the program over the last few years and for. Uh, stick it around. We've been having some challenges here the last couple of days, and uh, we are going to be off on the holidays. And so we're going to be uh, we're going to be off from Christmas to New Year somewhere in there. Uh, and uh, we're we're working on getting things squared away for after the New Year. So uh, we appreciate you being part of it. We appreciate you joining us. We hope that you continue to stick with us, uh, and we hope that you have, you know, the best of. Uh, a best of holiday and, and Christmas seasons. We hope that that's something that, uh, that you are able to recharge and rejuvenate. I've always taken this time off between Christmas and new years. Cause for me, it was always about the staycation, right? That staying home and hanging out with the family and the kids and the tree and the popcorn and eating way too much and watching bad movies and, and hanging out at just that quiet time, that, that rejuvenation. And I hope that you're getting that as well. Uh, I hope that you're, 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 uh, putting all that together for yourself and and you're enjoying that with your family uh after the new year we'll have uh we'll have some new stuff coming out we'll be doing uh, some different things and we look forward to exploring all that with you as we move forward uh as i mentioned earlier i've got kind of a hiatus period here that uh i'm enforced from being off the actual terrestrial radio uh in the south central area you could still catch my show on saturdays in Fairbanks on KFAR. We've got a three hour show there in Fairbanks that we do from three to 6 PM. You can find the links to that at michaeldukeshow.com. And of course you could always like us on Facebook, facebook.com uh, slash Michael Duke show. That's the, uh, that's the way, and that's the best way, by the way, to, uh, to find out, uh, you know, whatever's happening with the show, that's where we'll be putting up all the information and uh, you know, that's where we'll be putting whatever you need to know about where the show is going or what's coming up. So it's right down there at the bottom of the screen right here. So just uh, write that down, facebook.com slash Michael Duke show, or you can go to Michael Duke show.com and we will, uh, we'll be giving you updates. Uh, we're going to be broadcasting some special podcasts uh, here in the near future. Eric and I are working on a couple big time podcasts. We're going to get some very specific ones for firearms Friday. Um, where we're going to try and spend an hour uh, with uh, various uh, members of the gun community and sit down and have kind of an unplugged type podcast with them. Um, and uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do a lot of fun stuff. we got a lot of ideas, a lot of things that we're playing around with and the technology is giving us a lot of opportunities to make a lot of this stuff happen. But um, I'm out until after the new year, I'm, I'm ready to go relax and hang out and uh, put my feet up, have a hot toddy, or two, or three, maybe it's some eggnog. Uh, it's going to be good stuff. That's all coming up uh, uh, for me here in the holidays. And then for you, we'll be seeing you after the new year. We hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the Michael Duke Show. It is your home for common sense, liberty-based, free-thinking internet radio. We'll see you after the new year. Have a great holiday, holiday season. season. It's the Michael Dukes Show. Oh, it's a magical Christmas time again. Your kids are counting on you. Yeah, Dad. Now, if only someone would do something for you. Honey, headache. Oh. Streaming live every weekday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. on Facebook Live and MichaelDukesShow.com.